Hey guys, Levi with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a muddler minnow. This is a streamer. It's been around for a while, and uh, it was created by Don Gapen to match sculpin, but it's good for a variety of things. Catch anything from trout, smallmouth, bluegill, even pike if you have a really big one. So we're starting with an Arex NS110 SE streamer hook in a size 4, and we're going to lay a base of thread down. And the thread we're using is Danville 3 aught. It's in the color peach, but the color doesn't really matter. If you're picking something, go with a tan, brown, natural shades. White would even work. So go ahead and snip the thread off. And we're going to get ready to tie in a tail. And for a tail, we're using turkey quills. We have a matched pair left and right. And uh, we're going to select some fibers. Bottom third, maybe up to the half on either of these, we're going to have to marry them together. So when we cut these, we want to get an even amount and we want to bring them again, one left, one right feather off of each wing. You can maybe get away with grabbing fibers from each side of the quill, but that's really not how you're going to get the best results here. So a matched pair is going to do you a favor. So go ahead and clip yourself some fibers, probably. 15 or so from the right and then go ahead and do the exact same thing from the left and what I like to do first off is just to make sure we have similar bundles of fibers just lay them on one another and if you see how this one See, there's more, just peel those off. And that'll help you size that tail. And when you're tying these in, some people like to tie them in like this. Others will let the tip point down. We're gonna go with the tip pointing down. I, I tend to prefer that. And whenever you're tying in quill wings of really any sort, whether you're putting them on a dry fly, a streamer, or even a traditional wet, it really helps to just line your thread with a little bit of dubbing wax. You don't need a lot of it, but it just helps to uh, seat these wings without separating the fibers. So go ahead and pin trap those. And you want the wing or the tail, I'm sorry, to be about 30% of the hook shank, 25, 30. And you can see with that dubbing wax, that was nice and easy to get in there. So once you have your tail, Go ahead and run your thread up to about 70% of the shank because we're going to put a tinsel body on here. If you have a neat underbody, it just makes the body itself look a little better. And if you guys like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button so we know and take that in consideration and we'll make more videos like this. So now we have a nice thread underbody here. And we're going to move into some flat and round tinsel. We want to tie the round tinsel in first because that's going to be our ribbing. And if you tie this in first, it'll be behind the actual body tinsel. So go ahead and wrap that in from the top to keep that underbody clean. And wrap it all the way back and then advance your thread right to that 70% mark. Cut that. You need probably three and a half, four inches to rib this fly. And you'll notice on this tinsel is a silver side there's a gold side. We want the gold side to be the body, so we need to tie it with the silver facing us. And that's, you know, if you wanted to have a silver body, you do the opposite of that. And for the body of this fly, we're using Mylar tinsel, colored gold, size 12 from Danville. And all of these materials can be found at tridentflyfishing.com and uh, any order over $49 ships for free. So if you're looking to tie some muddler minnows, we do have what you need on there. You'll notice that this tinsel, <clears throat> one side's gold, one side's silver. So you want to wrap the gold side on the shank with the silver side facing towards you. All right, so go ahead and tie the, that in and then advance your thread forward. Now we can start to wrap it. You want each wrap to be as close to the previous wrap as possible. 
so there aren't any gaps and you don't have your thread showing through. And also, if you want to enhance durability at this step, it doesn't hurt to just coat your thread with a little head cement. I didn't do it for this fly, but if durability is what you're after, that will actually increase things. All right, so we're at about 65% of the shank covered, and we're going to tie this down now. And you want, you want to leave enough space behind the eye of the hook because we got to tie in a wing still and spin some deer hair. So just be sure to leave yourself enough room. So now that we've tied the uh, tinsel in, we're going to counter rib it with some round tinsel and it's uh, size small in the oval. And you could do it either this way or counter. I prefer to counter it because then you have it going in an opposite direction than your body tinsel and it just aids in durability. So get that to the top and then we'll tie it down. <clears throat> so go ahead and snip that off. And now we're gonna tie in an underwing and which is gonna consist of a gray squirrel tail, some fibers there, just classic gray natural color. Really, you just want some support for this quill wing and it adds a nice little bit of color variance in there, but if you, end up really putting a lot of fibers in here, it's gonna give you trouble whenever you go to spin that deer hair head. So you'll see, I don't have a whole lot going on there. I'm gonna get rid of the shorter fibers and even these butts maybe a little bit, just so that we're in line. Clip that now and let's get that tied in. And go ahead and spin your thread if you need a little additional strength and pulling some tension on it. So tie that in. It's okay for it to flare up a little bit. You kind of want that. And go ahead and clip it off. From here, we're going to move into the turkey quills again for the wing. Let me go ahead and actually just wrap right to where we're going to be tying those in. We're going to tie those in right over top of the uh, squirrel tail again. One left, one right. Go ahead and grab some fibers. Uh, clip them off. One feather, do the same to the next. And measure them so they are, you know, equal amounts. And just like we did before, lay these against one another. So you can see if anything is uh, uneven. We only have to get rid of one or two on the bottom here. All right. And you wanna get this wing, you wanna measure it to be about the size of the tail. I like to have some sort of taper that goes, if you were to look at this, you can see how it's sort out about a 45 degree angle there. And that's where I'm gonna tie this in. I'm okay with that. Again. Hit it with a little dubbing wax before working with that quill wing just for your own benefit. It makes your life a lot easier. And it won't separate those fibers immediately like if you're using a non-waxed thread. So measure that. Go ahead and tie it in. One pin trap. Look at it from the top like that, that looks good. Go ahead and tie it down. Clip off the excess. <clears throat> and let's just get ready to spin some deer hair. I'm gonna just lay a quick thread base down just so that it's not super staggered. Again, if you have a clean underbody, everything on the outside tends to follow suit a little more easily. So now for the head of this fly, we're just using standard deer body hair. It's not dyed or anything. And I'm gonna go in, grab a clump. It's a little on the bigger side. You'll need more hair for a larger hook, less hair for a smaller hook. You kind of gotta size it to the uh, to the fly at hand. So this is uh this deer hair deer hair has quite a bit of under fur to it. So I'm just gonna go in with a bodkin. You can also use a comb. I just happen to have a bodkin on hand. So go in there and you'll see all this fluff coming out and this sort of under fur. Get rid of that because whenever you're spinning deer hair, that is just the worst thing to deal with and it's not going to do you any favors at all. 
So clean that up. And again, a comb works just fine, but you can get away with your dub or your uh, dubbing needle as well, vodkin. And once you get this cleaned up, make sure your tips are even, especially for this first collar, because that's going to kind of tie this fly together. You can use a hair stacker, but my tips aren't bad right now, so I'm going to omit that step. So go ahead and let that collar extend about 20% into the body and into the wing. And it helps to spin your thread right now. A round thread is going to work. It should be a little tighter than a flat thread. So one wrap and then spin it around. Extend it a little bit actually. I don't... There we go. And get that, so you can see, 360 degrees around the shank. And this is where that three odd thread comes in handy because you can really crank down. And then go ahead and manipulate these fibers rearward. And slip your thread through. Helps, I like to slip it through about, mm, I wouldn't say quite a 45 degree facing southwest, it's about a, 35 maybe 45 works too but it's just a little more precise i'm going to do two bunches for this head again a larger fly might require more a uh, smaller fly might maybe get away with just one you have to be really small though again a little more than a pencil's diameter and just clip that off and get in there with your dubbing needle and get that under fur out kind of a mess, so if you guys have one of those trash receptacles that hit, goes and integrates into your vise, this is a good fly to have that for, especially once we start trimming this deer hair because that is royally messy. All right, so what I do, just get rid of these tips. They don't contribute to the profile or anything of this fly. And if you only have that one set of tips that we tied in initially, it'll be harder for you to accidentally trim those off, which can be a problem. But if you do it this way and only have tips in one area, it just kind of lowers the chance of uh, failure on that. And wrap once. Wrap twice. And get ready to spin it. If you guys like the muddler minnow, we do have everything that we're tying with on tridentflyfishing.com and all orders over 49 bucks will ship for free. So if you want to stock your boxes with these, they are a good pattern for summer smallmouth and largemouth bass. We have everything you need on there. All right, so now that we've got that spun, again, 360 degrees around the hook shank. We're gonna come up at about that 40, 35, 40, 45 degree angle. Snake our thread through the hair. Sometimes that can be a little challenging, but it's important because if you don't get it through nicely, your spun deer is not gonna look so good. You're gonna have gaps in it and holes. So go ahead and get some thread behind the eye and you can just hit it with a half hitch. Throw a whip finish in there as well. All right, you can clip our thread now. Done with the tying process of this, and now we're gonna work on trimming some deer hair. Before I trim, I like to just run a bodkin through there. That's gonna free up any fibers that are trapped. It's gonna make sure everything's going in the direction that you tied it in. And it's just one of those steps that while it looks insignificant, it will really help if you have anything that's going wrong in there. So you wanna be careful when you're doing this 
not to cut your collar off. So just keep that in mind visually whenever you are trimming your deer hair and you can kind of pull this all up a little bit so you can see in there and this will all sweep back once the uh, fly's finished and trimmed. So I start right at the bottom just to get that hair out of the way first. Whenever you're trimming this fly, it's just a little easier on everything if you uh, trim it in small steps. Instead of getting in there and just getting rid of everything all at once, because it's really difficult to add fibers. It's actually impossible at this point. So you don't want to have to clip this head off and redo it. You'll see I'm taking really my time. And I'm also using the rotary function of this vise, which if you don't have a rotary vise, it might even be better to just take this fly and trim it in your hands because you really, it really helps you to move around the shank, see everything at a 360 degree angle, and prevent mistakes when trimming while also keeping things consistent. And you'll see this head starting to take shape with each pass. And this head's pretty tightly packed. The fibers, the deer fibers, hair fibers themselves aren't super dense. So this is gonna be able to push water nicely while maintaining a pretty compact profile, which is good. And this is another trick that works to really get everything out of there. If you just take your fingernail and pull this eye down, it'll kind of fan everything out and it'll also get rid of any fibers in there that m may have cut and got trapped. And if you guys have a way to tie a muddler that's different from this, go ahead and toss that in the comments because we always like to know what our viewers are doing and we also like to see the variety in tying styles that exist out there. And once you're satisfied with the uh, trimmed head you have there, the fly is actually done. And I wanna thank everyone for watching. It's a muddler minnow and we'll see you next time.